Hello and welcome back to the 2018 Mercedes-Benz Virtual GP. We're in Belgium for the first of four races using the 1989 Mercedes C9, and it's time for the fifth round. My name is Justin, and joining me for all of the thrilling action around the legendary spa circuit, it's Chris. It is always a pleasure to be back in the box for VGP and alongside the beautiful beard that is Justin. It is going to be wonderful here at Spa. It is the circuit that has seen the light of day every season for VGP. It's been won twice by our current season dominator Michael Middle, and has also been won by Honzik. So yes, we are going to be in for a fabulous race with these deep roaring Mercedes C9s. Yeah, and as it stands right now, Michael Schmidl is in fact leading the championship with 102 points to Michael Blazek's 57. So it's a pretty significant significant gap, but then it's very close for second position with Pelesny in third on 55 and Stefanko not far off in fourth position on 50. First part of the Mercedes-Benz Virtual GP 2018 season is over, and that means we have to say goodbye to the beautiful and modern Mercedes-AMG GT3 cars. In 2018, the Virtual GP has come with a brand new format, bringing a much bigger variety in using three completely different cars throughout the season. That obviously makes it more complicated for the drivers, as they have to constantly learn the new cars. A good adaptability is absolutely crucial to this year's championship, and who better to ask about how to approach this challenge than Yaroslav Hanzik, who has a vast experience of racing with many different cars in many different simulators. So usually the thing I do is I'll always jump on the track with the car with default setup. I do a couple of laps and see what the car does, and then I start like setting up the car and doing various things. Mostly I go for the suspension, that's the, I think the most important part, along with the camber. So I usually see what the car does when you go on the bumps, when you go on the curbs, also different from track to track. Because also you change the gears and stuff like that, you can do it right away, but the basics you really want to take a look on is the suspension and the camber. I think for me it's very simple because I have a very long experience with all type of cars and tracks and simulators. So I can tell you that in the first corner I use the brakes on the car, I exactly know where to brake next time. So I really don't need more than two corners to remember the brakes and then I change some basic stuff to brake later, later, later. And I prefer oversteer setup with any type of the cars. So the first thing I was trying to do is to make the car steer. Now I'm kind of working out with oversteer and the understeer and I really try to make the car stable at the end. I think that was one of the mistakes I did in the past in my like years ago because I was just practicing for the qualifying and didn't spend my time for the for the race setups. And I think Virtual GP in the previous years just uh, teach me that the race setup is more important than qualify. So nowadays, Always when I do setup, I always do it for a race and then I just practice for a qualifying as well. I think the setups are my weakness for most of the games, but I think it comes with the time, you know. I, I know what to change on the car, but the problem is that uh, I don't do much of the practice. So that's the time, that's the place where I lose. But for me, it's very easy to make like a good stable setup for the races and work with that. It's very, it's like, give me three laps and I can do a really basic setup, which I can be fast but it's not the world championship setup <laughs> i haven't honestly tried the car yet so i expect because it's prototype c i expect am amazing train of power absolute power and i think we have a turbo engine as well so it might be a kicking in all the time so it might be very difficult so i'm really looking forward i was kind of hoping the car will be very easy on setup but uh, i think there will be a lot of stuff you can do and to work with so i'm very interested in that And there she is, the beautiful Mercedes-Benz C9 from 1989 in its Le Mans configuration. Low downforce and high gear ratios, 905 kilograms, over 750 brake horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. This thing is a monster and it has got a very deep 5 litre V8 roaring engine for these drivers to enjoy. 1989 season, it's won 7 out of the 8 races. And for Le Mans, it, tried, it had three entries and got first, second and fifth, notably in the hands of Jochen Maas and Jean-Louis Schlesser. 
And last time out at Brands Hatch, your driver of the day was in fact Michael Schmidl. No, no, no big surprise there, let's be honest, but huge congratulations to him on that one. A spa circuit, 4.3 miles and 19 corners. We all know it oh so well. The air temperature is 28 degrees Celsius, track temperature 36, and it is clear skies. Toasty, toasty warm then as we head down to so this is what these C9s look like in their racing spec and this is how the qualifying order starts. Michael Smith once again starting with the pulse, pulse ball with Dolajal in the second place behind him by half a second and Stefenko in the Republic game is going third, Hansik fourth, Schlebeck five and Pelesny is rounding out the top six. Yep, Kostulik, Blazek, Sikora, and Zubik, Zubek rounding out the top 10, and Prohaska and Lucas down at the back. So these are the drivers. They're on their formation lap at the moment. We will have a rolling start, which is, of course, different from the modern Mercedes AMG GT3 cars that we saw for the first four rounds of this 2018. Mercedes-Benz virtual GP season, but we're we're now going back back in time. We're going way way back to 1989, back when I was uh, in preschool. Actually, if uh, if people can even imagine me imagine me in preschool, but <laughs> yeah, I was back in preschool in 1989, still just a, a very young young child. Really wasn't even into racing just yet. Although if you had shown me a car like this at four years old, I probably would have been a fan right away. <laughs> I was the tender age of nine in uh, 1989 so uh, yeah that really puts it in perspective on where we were at this time so now the drivers have formed up their 2 by 2 line you can tell that they've backed the speed off to 56 miles an hour 80 kilometers an hour there they are with uh, that is Dolajol that is really raring to go he's going to have the outside line when they come over the line for La Source and of course Michael Smiddle the pole man in the red Predator car I've just about gotten used to the colour scheme and then of course we then change cars so they've all changed shape but out, look at them they are absolutely stunning and the uh, low drag configuration and there we go. is going to work really well and away we go that is the start of the race and Schmidl with the inside line into turn one into the source is going to hold on to that lead oh a bit of contact though <laughs> looks like the Seiko Plus car the Lynx car oh some more contact in the background as well I think the Avast car maybe the Legion car too getting involved the Elsa gaming car of Hlevitz though is going to continue on he's going on the attack into Eau Rouge they go but no he's not able to make the pass uh, into the uh, extremely famous corner though. Uh, the Lynx car of Jan Sikora though into second position ahead of Martin Stefanko as they come onto the Kemble straight. It's going to be three wide nearly just about but the Lynx car holds back. The, the thinks better of it and uh, yeah this is some really really close racing we're already seeing but it is also allowing Michael Schmidl who is leading the championship again with 102 points. He, uh, oh and that's the Xiaomi Geek car spun round. That is not the best way to start in these uh, 1989 Mercedes-Benz C9s for Martin Kostulik. That's going to drop him down right to the back, as well as Prohaska. He's been involved in some sort of incident as well, too, possibly getting involved in that inc incident with Kostulik. So uh, I'm not sure what's happened there, but the Lynx car is uh, now coming under attack, heading into Puan. Sikora was up into second position, but it hasn't really worked out well for him in the first half of the lap. But we're already seeing very close racing here, Chris. Absolutely we are. There's uh, everybody with the exception of Prohaska and Kostelik are pretty close together and Smiddle beginning to stretch his legs at the front. I think we've said that once or twice before. But these cars are so, so different, not just aesthetically, but how they behave behind the wheel, how they deal with trying to deliver the power through to the tarmac. Now, of course, the beautiful Mercedes-Benz GT3 cars have the advantage of ABS and traction control, no such toys for these cars. And that is the lead that uh, Michael Smittle has for himself as he comes down to the bus stop chicane for the first time in anger. That's about three seconds he's got for himself already. There is Andre Schlebeck in the third place car with Stefanko right with him. And he's got uh, the linked car of Jan Siegra not too far behind. That's Wojtek Pelesny in the next car along. And that's Michael Blaszczak in the Legion car. He's right the way down. Look at that. That's uh, Zubek who was on the front row. He's fallen all the way down to seventh. Oh, my goodness me. He had to get out of that. Oh, dear. That's uh, Prohaska in the Vodafone car having trouble. And he was trying to get to the pits along with that uh, very damaged car of uh, Martin Kostelek. 
Now, these cars do not like having the... They will take a little bit of impact, but they get unsettled far more easily than the GT3s do. And, oh, Blata got a lovely run through O'Rouge, up onto Radion, and through the Camel Straight to take that eighth position. And, oh, there's still fighting going on coming into Lake Arm. It is going on here, there, and everywhere. That is definitely what we like to see. Yeah, this is really, really exciting stuff. I think that oh, was... What a uh, move. Oh, gosh, Bla Blazek actually, with some more side by side. And actually, here comes Zubek as well. He's getting involved in this. Dolagel is involved in this as well, too. Up ahead, Hanzik and Pelesny were going side by side at the end of the Kemble Strait as well. And Blazek actually loses that position, drops back down to ninth position after gaining, uh, going up into eighth ahead of Peter Dolagel. And uh, and he, he piled that pressure onto Zubek as well, too, who is maybe back up in, in the places where we expected him to be after a uh, impressive 2017 season in the single seaters. It didn't really work for him in the GT3 cars, but potentially in these Le Mans prototypes from 1989, he could be feeling a bit more comfortable. So Peter Zubek running in seventh position. Peter Dolagel again back up into eighth after regaining that spot from Michael Blazek, who had that incredible overtake and and, uh, and then got overtaken as well. But that was equally interesting. So we're already seeing lots of moves. Of course, these cars don't have tons of downforce, certainly nowhere near the amount of downforce that we see in the single seaters from last year or that we will see in the single seaters later on this season starting with round nine of the 2018 mercedes-benz virtual gp season but we're on board with michael blajek getting to hear that fantastic roar of that incredibly powerful engine again these cars uh don't weigh very much either uh, i think it was uh, 900 something kilograms so really not much on them as far as weight tons of power and they're, they're about as technologically advanced as a stapler so it really comes down <laughs> to the drivers here oh completely yeah it all comes down to how well they manage that right foot there's no toys in these things what they can do is adjust the boost pressure on the fly so they it's up to them as to how much boost they run at any one time but if they run the boost pressure too high for too long the engines will not cope if at uh, full crank the if the boost is at absolute full pressure, the engines will die within a few laps, so they can't just stick the boost through the roof and worry about it later. Oh, look at that! The, oh, a bit of contact there, Jan Sikera and Andre Schlebeck, I think that was, coming into Lake Arm, oh, but the Lynx cars had to take a bit of avoiding action. Oh, goodness me, and then rejoins the track right next to... I think That's it's Hansik. Hansik. Yeah. Yeah, so Hansik is really getting the grips. He, he didn't seem to, to kind of midfield at best, which is a strange thing to say about Jaroslav Hansik in the GT3 cars, but he's really coming alive in this part of the race so far. And uh, Jan Sikra, again, he had a bit of a mixed first few races of the season, but uh, yeah, he seemed seemingly having a bit of a mixed race here at Spa as well. But you can also see, whilst we're on board with Jan Sikra, how they're having to take Poo on very, very carefully. There's a lot of power waiting to deploy itself through these rear wheels and they don't have the downforce exactly as we've said before they don't have the downforce to keep the car glued to the road with the exact reverse and look at the tail actually of uh, Honzik's car ahead that is just where the power is getting a little bit too carried away and again they've got the boost to worry about as well they've got the boost pressure a little bit higher than they might expect the tail is going to kick out and they have to be very very quick to save it oh that's someone wandering very much off the road as uh, that's Dolajal gaining for a couple of positions, that's Blasix not having a good race at all. That's another position he's lost. Yeah, Zubek losing two positions there. And in fact, Robin Lucas looks like he wants to uh, relegate him down into 10th position as he goes around the outside of Blanchimont. That's not a very common move that you see side by side, just about, but not quite. The Avast car just that little bit later on to the brakes and the sand disc car will have to stay behind. So Robin Lucas, who again is another driver that has not had a, a fantastic start to his 2018 season. He's going to be on the prowl and looking to gain as many points as he can. Pick, him, uh, pick up a handful of points when he can, where he can, and it looks like this might be a spot where he can. He's right on the back of what is a very busy part of the circuit. Lots of positions possibly to be gained here. Zubek clearly struggling a little bit, has dropped down to ninth place. We did see him running around in seventh as we climbed the hill onto the Kemmel Strait on board with, uh, I believe this is Dolezal uh, that we're on so board. Well, yeah. yeah, it is, and uh, getting the slipstream off of Pelesny. Pelesny defends the inside line down towards the end of the Kemmel Strait, but it looks like with that straight line speed, he's going to just breeze on by. Here's the battle between Stefanko and Hlebitz. Hlebitz is still holding on to that lead uh, ahead of Martin Stefanko. The gap, meanwhile, between Schmidl and that pair 
the rest of the uh, the podium there is uh, is getting bigger and bigger. Seven seconds or so is what we're seeing at the moment. Dolagel has had a heck of a race. In fact, it's been a very busy race, I would say, from Hanzik down to Lucas. Kostulik and Prohaska, uh, again, getting involved in some lap one incidents as well. So it hasn't exactly been a boring race for either of them either, but they are they are a little bit further back and with some pretty big gaps ahead of them at the moment. So they'll be looking to get closer to the group. They'll be hoping that something happens with the drivers ahead that allows them to close up that gap. And I just love seeing the fire spitting from the side exhausts of these, of these uh, Mercedes C9s as they get into the braking zone for that campus chicane. And uh, we're on board again with Dolagel. Just looking at the back of Jan Sikora, who has kind of been all around the, uh, the top five, except for the lead because that has been that has been held by Michael Schmidl the entire time. That he has. <clears throat> he has won every race from pole so far, and he's looking to continue that momentum as he is now around about uh, between seven seconds or so uh, in the lead at the moment. And Dolores is just beginning to reel in Sikora. The Lynx car feeling the need to defend the inside line coming into the bus stop chicane. And just and again, you are seeing how squarely that Lynx car is, and because he couldn't get the traction down, the Seco Plus car of Peter Donaldson now gets alongside. He's going to have to do an outside maneuver around the source, which is far easier said than done. And there went the tail of Peter Donaldson's car. And look at the momentum that gave back to Jan Sikora. Wow! And no sooner do I say that, he's two wheels on the grass almost trying to get past before he gets on o, o Rouge. Up he goes, can he keep it legal? It's just about kept him between the lines coming on to Radion. But now that, of course, it's going to give the slipstream effect to Jan Sikra. Here come the second, third, and fourth cars coming through the shot. And there goes the Lynx car of Jan Sikra on the inside of Lecom. Can he hold it? Not quite. Still side by side. Peter Dolashon now. He's got more oh, nips. Nearly three wide. That's Wojtek Pelesny trying to get involved in that particular battle. And also Michael Blazek. Why not bring everybody in? There's only a certain amount of track. But now it looks like the second plus car of Peter Dolashon has finally got through there. But wow, there's Pelesny. Oh, a bit of uh, wheel banging going on there. The Lynx car losing another position. Blazek has now got in there, and that's just how costly one little mistake is. There's Peter Zubek in the Avast car trying to get involved as well. So much going on, and I suspect this is going to go on for quite a while. Mega effort from Polesny to get up into sixth position there. That was very, very tight with lots of cars jostling for position, but he made it work for him, got up into that sixth place. Jan Sikra, meanwhile, he's the one that's lo losing out in all of this. Again, he was up into second position at the start of this race. He's now dropped down to eighth as Michael Blazek and Polesny as well. Wojta Polesny uh, drop him down even further down the grid. So the one uh, positive that Sikora can take is that he's, he's got a similar pace to all these guys. It is clearly very, very tight in this kind of midfield uh, in, for the lower points positions uh, because, of course, up at the front for the podiums, it is Michael Schmidl kind of running away with it, although the gap is shrinking ever so slightly to Klebets, who is getting closer and closer, it seems. Stefanko is a little bit outside of Klebets. He's not uh, an immediate threat. And then you have Yaroslav Hanzik in fourth position, now starting to pile on the pressure. Meanwhile, the battle for sixth position continues to rage up at the back. Jan Sikora getting the best exit he possibly could out of that bus stop chicane, but it looked like his line was a little bit hampered by the car up ahead. That is the Legion car just ahead of him of Michael Blazek. He needs a good run out of that final corner. And I think that some of the twitching we're seeing is from the drivers just being a little bit uh, optimistic, maybe, with their turbo settings coming out of the low-speed corners, especially the source climbing the hill once again, nearly half an hour, just over half an hour remaining in this race. Oh, that's not the line you want to be taking through there for Jan Sikro. That's going to put Peter Zubek onto the back of him. Will he go defensive? Yes, he moves over to the right-hand side of the Kemmel Strait with the Avascar closing in pretty significantly. They're getting into the braking zone now, though. The Lynx car wants to take that racing line, but no, Peter Zubek wants... Oh, he couldn't quite go around the outside. He'll be forced to go through the circuit, and that's uh, not going to lose him too much time, but that is going to cost him a chance at taking that ninth place position from, uh, excuse me, that eighth place position, uh, for, or excuse me, seventh place position anyway. <laughs> it's getting very confusing in the midfield, as I said, but Zubek doing his best. Again, though, the big winner in all of this was Wojta Pelesny, and it was great to see the way that he just kind of scythed through there. He kind of made the space for himself. He wasn't rude or aggressive about it, but he was assertive, and he took that position, and it could mean a big haul of points for him uh, in just under half an hour's time. 
Absolutely. Again, jumping up to that battle for second position. Andre Slebeck and Martin Stefenko. They've broken away from Jaroslav Honzik a little bit, but not. Uh, he's not completely put the uh, popular Mr. Honzik out of it. The Republic of Gamers car keeping that pressure on the second place Slebeck. Also bearing in mind that these guys have a compulsory pit stop and they must take tyres so there is pit stop strategy involved in this particular race we have under half an hour plus one lap to go and you can just see throughout the field how tight this is so if somebody has you know has a bit of a problem getting into the pits maybe they have a slower stop than somebody else could be very very costly indeed so they've got to time it right but knowing when to get your car into the pits is so crucial and look at this Second, third, fourth, fifth. That's in a very short period of time. Oh my goodness me! There goes Stefanko on Slebek. Slebek's been shoved way off the circuit. It wasn't a massive impact between the two, but it was enough to send the Alza car off circuit. And he's actually lost two positions because Honzig has gone through as well. So again, one mistake is uh, being capitalised on Honzig now up to third. We haven't seen Honzik towards the sharper end of the field during the GT3 phase, so he may well have a bit more luck with the prototypes, but Andre Slebeck straight away back on the case on the camel strain. Now Zubek on the Lynx car of Jan Sikra. He's trying to make a move as well. He's now going to have an outside for the first part of the lake. Oh, a bit of wheel banging going on there, and the Vast car has to take avoiding action uh, to avoid a much bigger incident. And uh, the action is thick and fast. And again, that's Slebeck trying to get back up into second. He's alongside Stefanko. And that is Honzi. There's right with him. There's Dolajol that is not far off this particular pack either. So we've got two great big battles going on. Yeah, and Dolajel, as you mentioned, really not that far off. Pelesny either. If those guys start battling, then Pelesny, Blazek, Zubek, Sikora, these guys could all get involved in this as well too. Uh, again, looking backwards on board with the Mercedes C9 of Plevitz and looking backwards at Stavanko, he was up into P2 oh so briefly. I'm sure it did feel brief. I was uh, really enjoying the look of, of, I mean, I don't know if it was anger or focus that, that was going on with Plevitz, but he was really determined at getting by at the end of the Kemmel straight and he did it to his credit. Well done getting past, back past Martin Stefanko, putting him back down into third position. Can he hold on to it though? At this point, I have to wonder it's, it, it, how much of it is about being brave with the turbo because again, these guys do have control over their turbo settings, how much boost they're allowed to give themselves. They can't run 100% too much. It's primarily going to be used for overtaking, we suspect, or for uh, just pulling out a gap, that sort of thing. A bit of a lockup from the Republic of Gamers car of Martin Stefanko, and I think that could put Hanzik onto the back of him. Oh, and there's Sikora once again going side by side with Zubex, and he's actually going to dive into the pits. Now, there is no nothing in the actual rules that forces these guys into the pits. However, there is just not enough fuel fuel in the tank for them to actually go the entire distance. So that, that is going to add a bit of strategy to this racing. We didn't see too much pit stops in the AMG GT3 cars, the modern cars, but for these 1989 Mercedes-Benz C9s, we are going to see some refueling tire changes, maybe not tire changes. The hards apparently can last an entire race, but that's probably not optimal. We can see a lot of the field going for the mediums, but here we go onto the Kemble straight once again. Can Martin Stefanko close in on Hlevitz? No, it doesn't look like he can, but does he have to worry about Hanzik? No. In fact, it looks like Hanzik needs to worry about Dolichel right up until he goes off the circuit. <laughs> so Jan Sieger then has had his pit stop. <clears throat> he will, of course, come out at the back of the field, but everybody else will have to come through the pits at some stage. <clears throat> the tyres, unless they are running hard, and if they're running hard tyres with this much pace, I would be stunned. We can certainly see on the graphic overlay none of them are running the hard tyres. All of them opted for mediums, and that will not last to the end of the race. So some drivers may choose to come in early if they're stuck in traffic to try an undercut manoeuvre, so get themselves out in fresh air. I mean, Jan Sigre is about 10 seconds off the back of Prohaska, so he's got time to now get his foot down and start to really pull in for when these guys start coming in. I mean, that's six cars in that one shot alone. It's not like it's a big, you know, straight that we've just seen them come down. This man, however, has none of those things to worry about. <laughs> he's essentially just having a time trial out there with uh, 12 seconds to the lead now over this pack. We can see second, third, fourth, fifth, there's sixth, there's seventh as well. And we saw those cars on the Camel straight in the same shot. That's fine. That's quite a long straight. But we're now seeing them coming through Stavolo, Paul Frey, Blanchimont, all in the same shot. So, again, this is why some people won't want to pit too early because it'll put them right behind these guys. 
And if they feel they can keep the pace going, they feel they've got the grip in the tyres, and the, the medium side. Oh, wow! That was a big locker moment. That was a bit of a, uh, a scary moment, I suspect, for Martin Stefanko, but he held on to it. But again, you could just see the the just look of steel determination on his face. You see him in the bottom right of the shot there. Michael Blazek in the Legion car has decided now is his time to pit as well. Only uh, a couple of pits. Oh, Robin Lucas has come in. He climbed up to ninth in his battles, so uh, he seems to be much more comfortable with his prototypes as well. But uh, lots of battle is still going on. Yeah, Blazek pits, and I like that. I was I was just about to say I would really like to see somebody involved in this battle here. I would like to see somebody come into the pits now with less than 25 minutes remaining in the race. I think that's a very good call from Blazek, and we'll see if that pays dividends for him. These four cars coming onto the Kemble Strait once again with the benefit of the Swift Stream. Will we see any side-by-side -side action? Not quite. It looks like uh, as we go on board with Michael Schmidl, again, the race leader, when will he pit? Uh, that's surely going to be an indicator as it looks like Robin Lucas is into the pits as well. Uh, where will he feed out relative to Prohaska and Sikra? It looks like he's going to, in fact, drop down all the way to the back. So Blazek, Sikra, and Lucas all into the pits for what we, uh, well, is the one planned pit stop. Certainly, I don't expect any of these drivers are doing any two stops. I suspect we would, we would be seeing the soft compound if that were the case. But uh, again, the mediums should be just about perfect for a one-stop race. We do suspect that'll be the fastest way. Now, when the drivers come in and how they use their turbos, all of these things are completely up to them. So you may not have the DRS, you may not have the curves, but there are still a lot of variables in these cars and in the way that you can you can drive these cars around the circuit, and that is going to play a factor. It's not just about, of course, the raw speed, although if you ask Michael Schmidl, he might disagree with you, uh, but it, <laughs> it is also going to be strategy, how you use that turbo, because again, it has that limited lifespan, and also when you come into the pits, do you try the undercut? Do you try the overcut? Because that could be powerful as well. Keep in mind, before you come into the pits is when you're lightest on fuel. Mm. And there is race leader Michael Schmidl. He has decided to come in after nine racing laps. In he comes. And oh, that is so close, this particular pack. Oh, and that was Honsik trying an inside maneuver on Stefanko. Stefanko just shut the door, but he's given it too many beans too soon and got a real big task. Look, look at the amount of cars streaming in following Michael Schmidl's strategy. But Stefanko wants to try an alternate strategy, and why not? If, you know. Try something different to the leader if you feel you've got the pace to do it. And, well, that could have been an interesting incident <laughs> with the second plus car. So there we go. Look at that. Four or five cars. Five cars, indeed, coming in at the same time. Martin Stefanko continues on his way then in the lead of the race with Jaroslav Honzik in very, very short succession. Michael Smiddle is 20 seconds down the road now, but, of course, he has got fresh tyres and is raring to go then. We will see. Oh, and that's a bit deep then. Fistofenko is pushing a little bit too hard. And he may not have the, as much grip in the tyres as he would like. So the best of his has probably gone. Jaroslav Honzik doing a pretty good job. Then Prohaska has come in as well. So uh, his race isn't getting any better, it would seem, from the back of the field. But still plenty of opportunities to make up time. Oh, wow, look at that. That is Dolichol in the... Oh, beg your pardon. No, that's the Avast car. That's not Dolichol at all. Flying past uh, Schlebeck, that's costly. Flying past Schlebeck, I believe. Wow, he certainly uh, got his right foot where he needed to be. Wow, that's impressive stuff. Actually, yeah, that was uh, that was Zubek getting past uh, Pelesny. Pelesny's race now. Pelesny was involved in that battle, don't forget. Uh, but Zubek has just kind of made mincemeat out of him. He, he had a pretty significant gap by the end of the Kemble Strait there. So uh, I'm not sure if Pelesny has encountered some sort of problem. I do believe I saw him throwing his hands up in the air when he was in the pit lane or I, I'm not sure if he was in the pit lane but I, I definitely did see him throw his hands up in the air at one point so uh, I don't know if that if that was frustration because of a mistake or uh, if somebody else had interfered in some way but Martin Stefanko is coming through Blanchimont and towards the bus stop chicane with Yaroslav Hanzik in hot pursuit really not that much of a gap between the two of them I would really actually like to see these guys do a bit side by side action however something tells me we're going to see these two veteran sim racers come into the pits and we do indeed Stefanko is followed by Hanzik Two of the oh, oh, no! oh, and that is a huge mistake. Huge mistake for Martin Stefanko. He is stuck in the pit lane. He is going to be losing time hand over fist. Oh, man, I wish we could see 
uh, get the onboard footage, the webcam, to see what is going on with Martin Stefanko now. We know it is so tight in that pit lane. Thankfully, it didn't hold up Yaroslav Hanzik. He was able to go through. He's, you can see Yaroslav doing a bit of refueling of his own physical body, not just the car, but he, he's uh, mm -hmm. having a little drink while he's in the pit lane as well, too. But thankfully, that hasn't affected anybody's race other than Martin Stefanko, who again is deeply involved in that battle for second position in the championship. Again, Schmidl kind of walking away with it when it comes to the championship race, but Stefanko very, very tight in that second place battle, and that is, that's got to be so disappointing. And there he is. He's taking off his headset. That is his race run. He takes off the gloves. He throws them in frustration. Again, he's, a, he's an F1 esports finalist, but he is not, he's not going to be a spa race finisher. That has got to be so disappointing for Martin Stefanko. And that was, unfortunately, a bit of an unforced error. There was no contact there. It was, again, no, they can't rely on downforce at the best of times. As we are watching Andre Schlebeck and um, uh, it's, uh, Peter Dolezal having their battle. The Alza and Second Plus cars, respectively. But yeah, no, that was just such an unfortunate mistake. And when you make a mistake at such low speed as that, it just adds to the frustration. He would have felt the tail switch and maybe just purely instinctively tried to floor it. And of course, that just then wedged the car in sideways. There was no way he was going to be able to recover that. And sadly, Stefanko is out. Peter Dolezal, though, front row starter in this race. He's climbed his way back up to third with Schlebeck right in front of him. Oh, he was really closing in pretty quickly coming into the campus again. And Michael Middle, of course, retakes the lead to 15 seconds now. What is it going to take to, to uh, bring in Smittle? Uh, hurricane? Tornado? I don't uh, some, Something along those lines. Acts of God, yeah, are probably <laughs> what, what we're really looking for. Uh, because, yeah, that's, it's going to be really, really tough to stop the charge that he is on. It worked out really well for him in the pit stop phase as well, too. He didn't come out behind significant traffic. I'm going to keep my eye pretty closely on this battle between Dolezal and Hlevitz. But, uh, yeah, he, he, uh, he came out of the pits in clear air. Uh, again, we saw a number of drivers coming into the pits at the end of his lap copying the same strategy because why wouldn't you copy the strategy of the current championship leader? But here we go side by side now between Hlevitz and Dolezal down towards turn one. Uh, uh, Hlevitz gets very defensive in the Alza gaming card, uh, car into La Source and will hold on to the position for now. But what is his boost at? What is Dolezal's boost at? We'll have to see as they head down the hill now before heading back up the hill and onto the Kemmel Strait through Eau Rouge they go. You can hear a big lift and all the downforce just washes away for Peter Dolezal. He loses lots of time through Eau Rouge as he comes onto the Kemmel Strait now. And in fact, Klevitz moves way over to the right-hand side of that straight in order to break as much of the slipstream as possible. And uh, Dolezal really not even keen on going over there to try and follow him through it. So he's just gonna hold that line through the Lake Home section. Uh, he does take a little bit of a wider entrance to that right-hander compared to Hlebets, but it really hasn't gained him any significant amounts of time. Meanwhile, what's going on with Sikora? Uh, he's coming under attack from Yaroslav Hanzik, who is now up to sixth position with Peter Zubek just a handful of seconds behind these guys. You can see him just coming down the hill there in the back of the shot. Uh, but Hanzik is really focused on the Lynx car of Jan Sikora just ahead, and that would move him up into the top five. And with a small gap to Michael Blazek up ahead and a similarly small gap up to Dolezal and Hlebets, I have to imagine that Hanzik uh, fancies his chances at a podium here. Absolutely, and uh, you can see the effect of that pressure on Jan Sikora's Lynx car is having. You saw him locking up a few times. Uh, it's not, you know, these guys have, have crossed swords many, many times before, that much we know. But um, I don't think Peter Dolezal was very happy with that move that, uh, that Slebek did through coming up Oh, Rouge. You actually saw on the camera, he sort of looked over to his right and was not best pleased. But this man, though, is saping up a move. It looks like he's going to try, he may well try something through Blanchemont, which will be very, very brave, considering how little downforce these things have. And he remains in, he keeps that pressure on. But you could, again, look at the focus on Jan Sikora on the uh, right-hand panel, the left-hand seat. Oh, no, no, no sooner do we talk about that. Peter Dolezal in the second plus car flies past the Alza gaming car of Andre Schlebeck to retake that second spot. Goodness me. Oh, but he's overcooked it into the first turn, into the sauce. He got very, very squirrely, but just manages to fend off 
Oh, and that is the effect of the pressure on the Leeds car. He's gone off, and that has given that position to Yaroslav Honzik. He's now got his sights on the Legion car of Michael Blazek. Incredible. Two overtakes within the space of, what, 10 seconds or so? I have to say, though, uh, kudos to Dolagel. He really seems to be making good use of the turbo. As I mentioned before, oh, they're actually side by side. Up ahead is Slebitz trying to fight back on Peter Dolagel. It looks like he hasn't quite made it work. No, they're just making their way through Lacombe. He was really pressuring. It looked like he was going to try and go side by side, but it didn't quite work out for him. Dolagel maintains that second place, but it just seems when Dolagel makes these overtakes, he just flies past them. I don't know if he's just better on the throttle as far as when the turbo has a higher setting. I can, you know, we can speculate till the till the cows come home, but uh, there's just something about Peter Dolagel in this, in this uh, Mercedes C9 and he just seems to get along well with it because these these overtakes he's making seem effortless and i'm sure they're not uh from the driver's perspective <laughs> they never are but they just seem so effortless so i gotta i really gotta give it to uh to Dolagel. and there's uh Pelesny. again i i gotta mention Pelesny has had a bit of a shocking race he was involved in that battle that was essentially for second position because really second down to i don't i don't know like eighth are, uh, or, or seventh, really, are uh, pretty close to, uh, to, to, to one another. So, uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate how Pelesny's race has been run. Uh, I did also want to mention that we do, of course, have the driver of the day vote. That's going to be running until the next race on June 28th, so you guys can vote for your driver of the day. I'm tempted to give it to Dolagel just for the uh, sort of performance that he's put in. But, of course, uh, Schmidl, of course, a uh, very good candidate. Hanzik has been putting on a show for us as well. Yeah, it's going to be real hard to call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's uh, really, uh, you have a number of options to choose from, but uh, of course, uh, I want to thank our partners as well, uh, the pit crew online.net. Uh, they're the partners of this English broadcast, so I want to uh, give a shout out to them as well, too. And of course, uh, to the viewers, don't forget our prediction game as well. Uh, you can uh, uh, have a chance to win an elegant Mercedes-Benz Black Edition business chronograph watch, which I'm sure is almost as gorgeous as the C9. Yeah, I don't think you'll be able to win the C9, which would be quite amazing, but... Uh, oh, now that's a competition. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that, that way we'll fight you for that. You, <laughs> you, you know you, you know we work well, but in that case, no, 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 no. <laughs> so then we are looking at Peter Dottos. Talajal in the second plus and look at the gap that he has already built up Impressive. to Andre Schlebeck and then right behind them is this man Michael Blazek in the Legion car he's uh, had a bit of a mixed I think it's fair to say everybody has had a bit of a mixed race but what we can certainly grab from this it is so easy for the car just to snap that we've seen the tails wagging we've seen them kind of going off the road where they haven't been able to slow these monstrous cars down early enough and here's another person i want to give a shout out to robin lucas in the sandisk car he really struggled in the gt3s and he's you know he's eighth now i haven't seen him come to grief so he's really been able to keep himself out of trouble and he's really capitalizing as well but this man of course michael smith continuing is like we you know continuing to stamp his authority on the season he will not let us forget his name in that red predator car that's not like not that we would ever would forget him but of course he uh, it's just it's not leaving anything to chance he doesn't want to just ease off a little bit of course you start to slow down you start to th think about just bring it home instead of pushing on and it's amazing how easy a mistake can happen and these cars are a handful at the best of time here is Peter's, uh, Peter Zubek in the Avast car he is chasing Jan Sikora for sixth position coming through Blanchemont at the moment but different people, exactly as we kind of predicted towards the end of the GT3 phase, different people will handle these kind of conditions very, very differently. The different levels of downforce, the way that the power is executed through the rear tires, the when the boost kicks in, how much boost you kick in at any given time. If you catch that wrong, and we've seen it already several times where, you know, just as the boost is kicking in, you might still be turning. And yeah, if you don't handle that properly, you're going to lose the battle from the guy behind. Here is Honzik on the back of Blazek. Then this is for fourth. So all of these factors just completely shake up the season, and it is it's just adding to what's already been an amazing season. And long may it continue.
Yeah, yeah. As you said, it's uh, it's very difficult to know exactly how to take a corner. You know, because the you have the tire life, you have the boost settings, you have your own foot that's controlling the amount of throttle as well too. You know, do you use forty percent boost and sixty percent throttle? Do you use forty percent throttle and sixty percent boost? What is the right way out of that corner? And is it the same way for the next lap when the tires are that little bit older, when that much more fuel has been burned off? You know, it, there's just so many variables, and we've seen that there is one man in particular that has seemed to have conquered just about every variable that, that can be thrown at him, and that is Michael Schmidl. The one variable that he hasn't thrown at him, though, however, is some competition in this race. Uh, he hasn't had to go side by side. He hasn't had to do uh, go any, take any defensive lines or anything like that. And I think the incredible battling that we've been seeing for everything that ju that for just about everything below first position uh, is only increasing that gap and flattering his pace even further. That's not to take away from the incredible job that Michael Schmidl is doing here. But again, everybody below Schmidl has had to fight tooth and nail for whatever position they are in. Dolagel has had some incredible overtakes in this race where he practically he made it look like the, the competition was standing still practically. Mm. Uh, I mean, he just breezed on by. So, uh, I, I mean, he but he's he's had to make those overtakes where Schmidl hasn't. So he's allowed to, to do those time trial laps, as you mentioned earlier, Chris. You know, he's allowed to really focus. Uh, meanwhile, Hanzik has to deal with the with the Legion car ahead of him, for example, uh, which is, uh, by the way, I have to say, probably my favorite car. That Legion car is gorgeous in the uh, yellow, uh, red, and black livery. Real big fan. I mean, all of these cars are beautiful just because the, uh, the C9 is just so attractive already, but actually not that further back. The Avast car and the Lynx car are battling it out as well, too. Let's see what Zubek can do on Sikora as he was really hugging that barrier on the right-hand side, trying to open up Rouge as much as he possibly can. Big lift. He hugs that line a little bit tighter. Uh, oh, actually, we're on board with Hanzik. I apologize. Those battles really are not that far apart. So when we went on board, I thought we were still on board with uh, with Zubek. But no, this is the battle for fourth position again. Blazek in the uh, Legion car just ahead of Hanzik. Not able to make anything happen on this occasion at the end of the Kemble Strait. However, there is still just more than seven laps or seven minutes remaining in this race, plus one more lap. Oh. And there it is. There is that battle between Zubek and Sikora. Zubek around the outside in the Avaskar. Oh, oh, oh. Sikora with the inside line as they descend the hill. Surely he's going to be able to defend this position with the inside line, but around the outside goes Zubek in that Avaskar side by side in those beautiful Mercedes C9s. A little contact between them, but it looks like Sikora is in fact going to hold on to that position. Zubek trying his best, but uh, I have a feeling this battle might not be over yet, Chris. I think you might be right there. Peter Zubek trying outside maneuvers in two different places in low downforce cars. I am sorry, that is incredible bravery and a lot of trust in the car you're in and the car you're passing. Great, great stuff. Well played and exactly as you say, not done yet. As a Wojciech Polesny's day is getting even worse, he's in the pits again. So sadly, he has uh, not enjoyed these cars here at Spa. So hopefully his race will get better, or his season rather, will get better as the rounds progress. But all eyes at the moment are on the Avascar. No, we've switched back to Honzik and Blazek then. Whoa, as the oh. Legion car goes very wide on the AZ of Blanchemont. That's not going to gain Honzik a great deal, but he gets very close as they uh, get into the braking zone for bus stop once again. And again there, you just see the tail of that Legion car just not wanting to stick. Yeah, but of course, Blazek is doing his best to kind of moderate that as best he can. And wow, he went very early to the defensive line of La Source. It shouldn't compromise his exit too much. And there went the tail of Honzik's car. Yeah, didn't want to stick just at the moment that he wanted to get the horses deployed. And now going to come up a route again. This is going to be where Honzik needs to get a decent line. Oh, the Legion car's a little bit slower. Oh, that got a little bit hairy for uh, Honzik as well the camel straight again and wow there you go there is the effect of the boost and Blazek knew he would have been in trouble he had to deploy it and um, oh this however different story Subic staying nailed into the slipstream of the Lynx car on Sikra oh, oh that's gone horribly wrong that's gone horribly wrong for the Avast car of Peter Subic he's going to do a bit of lawn mowing whilst he's out there he's going to have to let the next cargo which of course he does 
He lands the Antigua back into position. Oh, but that's a problem uh -oh. for Zubek. Yep. Oh, no. He's uh, is he out? That he's pulling over. I think he's coming to stop Peter Zubek. No, what a tragedy for his race to come to an end like that. Oh, no. And then you can see him at the bottom left of the shot. He is not happy. And quite rightly so. He is out. What a travesty. Interesting. I mean, we've had uh, more. I, I think we've had more DNFs than than we had at Macau. It was it was so long ago. It feels now, but <laughs> this, this is this is really surprising stuff we're seeing. And I have a feeling. Uh, again, Hanzik and Blazek are right next to each other. But I, I just want to speculate if I can very briefly. I think Zubek may have blown his engine heading into the Lake Home section at the end of the Camel Strait, and I think he may have just been carrying momentum over the over the curbs and into. Uh, turn nine and then he pulled over to the side but I think he may have actually blown his engine maybe did uh, got a little bit too eager with the turbo again the turbo cannot last but a few laps oh and that is some contact actually Hanzik is getting very aggressive onto the back of Michael Blazek now surely this is going to be an overtake out of the final corner uh, out of the bus stop chicane across the start finish line three and a half minutes plus one lap still remaining in this spa race and uh, Blazek gets very defensive in the Lenovo a Legion car and here comes Hanzik though with the cutback he'll have to go around the outside for the left kink heading into a rouge down the hill they descend I imagine it's going to be full boost for Blazek to try and to defend this and it looks like it's just going to be enough for the Legion car he stays ahead of Yaroslav Hanzik but with the slipstream and possibly some boost Hanzik could take this fourth place position it looks like he may be out of the fight for the podium we suspected he might have been involved in that earlier in the race but now with the uh, with the move on the Legion car he will move up into fourth place but he's got a pretty big gap to Hlebitz up ahead I'm not sure if Hanzik oh but here comes Blazek back at him it's not over just yet just like Sikora and Zubek uh, just because the move is done I don't think the battle is over just yet so Blazek moves down to fifth Oh, man, you got to feel for Blazek. He's had three podiums already this season, three out of four races, and he's gotten podiums. It's been a fantastic start for him. He's been one of the most consistent drivers, and he, it looked like he was going to finish just outside the podium, but Hanzik relegates him down to fifth position. We'll see if Blazek can fight back with him. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, I think in the case of Zubek, that may have been a case of him losing the engine at the end of the Kemmel straight rather than as he was going over those bumps and curbs yeah. through the Lake Home section. So, uh, again, we're just hypothesizing on that one. But, again, we'll continue to monitor this battle between Hanzik and Blazek because, again, Chris, I think it may not be done just yet. Uh, not too far up the road, exactly as you mentioned earlier, is Andres Lebeck. Uh, I think it's, he's going to take a mistake from the Alza Gaming car to bring him into that battle, but you just never know. He was a man that's uh, seen his fair amount of... Uh, action today is the Xiaomi Geek car of Martin Gossetti. He can see that is a Thomas Brahaska, the Vodafone car, slightly further down the road. It's, uh, and voila, there he is. It's, uh, it's been a fairly, I'd say comparatively quiet race. They may not agree with this. <laughs> as, uh, they've had their own uh, battles to deal with with the actual car themselves. Back up to this particular collection of cars here there is Slebek there is Hanzek and there is Blazek and in the background you actually saw Sikora as well he's a little bit too far off the back of this to be involved we have got just over a minute plus one lap to go so uh, depending on where Smiddle is now imagine he will the timer will have expired before he crosses the line so we are on the penultimate lap then and look at the gap that Hanzik's already got for himself over Blazek. So either Blazek's just simply taking it easy, maybe conceding defeat, which is not a, not in the interest of any driver. And there is our race leader, Michael Smiddle, coming down through. That's uh, Puan, he's coming through then, so he's not going to make the flag. He's not going to beat the flag in the next 30 seconds, not unless he's, he goes finds a lot of pace and downforce from somewhere. But uh, So this is indeed the penultimate lap. He could pretty much ignore top gear at this point and just kind of coast home but of course he won't he will want to press on and ensure that he doesn't and you can again see that that, that little twitch from even michael smidler's car the predator red car is uh, not without his battles as well albeit with himself as opposed to anybody else so he's had 
those kind of fight battles as well. It's not been all plain sailing for Michael Smith, but exactly as you said earlier, Justin, he hasn't had to defend from anybody, so he's been able to take the exact line he wants to get the breaking zone he wants, etc., etc. He hasn't had to contend with anybody else. So then here he comes into the bus stop chicane to start what will be the final lap. That's right, white flag this time by for Michael Schmidl and indeed the rest of the drivers as they will follow him through. Dolagel uh, a little bit more than 10 seconds or a little bit less than 10 seconds actually. Uh, I'm not. There he is in the background. Is 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 that Dolagel in the background? That didn't look that didn't look like the single plus car. That might have been a lap car possibly. Uh, we do know that I think it was uh, Pelesny that came into the pits. That was yeah, Pelesny. Uh, might be looking to, yeah, he's on the softs right now. Pelesny is pushing for fastest lap because, of course, you can get an extra point. And he was already down in 10th position. Uh, so if he can pick up fastest lap on those softs, that'll actually double his points haul. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it really has uh, been a case of a, a tale of two predators in this race with the predator red car of Michael Schmidl, who we're on board with now. Uh, it's, it's been a fantastic race for him. Uh, uh, pretty much uh, the best race you could ask for. Uh, meanwhile, Pelesny has had a bit of a shocker. Again, uh, the gap that he has to Kostulik ahead is mainly because he pitted a second time for the softs in order to try and get fastest lap. Uh, however, uh, he, he, what, he has been right down at the back. However, all of the finishers will, in fact, will be scoring points today due to that issue with Zubek and Stefanko. And if you had asked me to pick which two drivers were going to DNF. If you told me two drivers are going to DNF, which two will they be? I don't think I would have picked Stefanko or Zubek, to be honest. Uh, so that's really a surprising one. Again, this is the first race using this Mercedes-Benz C9 in its Le Mans configuration, and it does have a lot of horsepower, and it does not have a lot of driver aids. So it is extremely difficult. We've seen just how difficult it can be when we go on board with the drivers. Honestly, you can see how difficult it is from the off-board shots. You can see the, 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 the car is just squirming around, and it really is because the power seems to come all in one big lump. These turbos are massive. So when you, when you turn it up to 100% boost, you're getting a lot of power very suddenly. But it's all been under control, cool, uh, cool as a cucumber for Michael Schmidl, who comes through the bus stop chicane for the final time in this fifth round of the 2018 Mercedes-Benz Virtual GP. And it is going to be a fifth out of five victories for Michael Schmidl. I don't think he would have gotten uh, the fastest lap because I think that is going to go to Pelesny. Uh, and he gives us a, a bit of a thumbs up and a wave and then a thumbs up <laughs> and a wave at the same time. Wow. Uh, he can... He can uh, do them both at the same time. Dolagel, though, again, possibly my driver of the day. Uh, pretty significant gap to Hlebets in the end. And was he was he actually closing in on Schmidl in the end? I think he may have been. Uh, but Hlebets on the podium ahead of Hanzik. In the end, though, not much between them. A fantastic race for both those drivers. Really got to give it to them. Uh, Sikoro was kind of up and down all throughout the field, it really felt like. Blazek as well, too. They'll come home in sixth and fifth, respectively, for those two drivers. So uh, it was a very exciting race for the Legion and the Lynx cars. Uh, but And they will get a, a nice haul of points, too. Uh, double digit points for Blazek. Uh, not quite double digits for Sikora. Uh, but it was a very interesting race. We saw a lot of overtakes today, didn't we, Chris? We certainly did. Uh, a lot of overtakes, a lot of, uh, a lot of bits of bodywork being bent out and scraped out of shape as well. It was a uh, Robin Lucas for what I Props believe. to Lucas. Yeah, he's only had yeah. one point in the first four races, and now he's going to come home with six. So by far his best result of the season. Fair play. Yeah, to the Sanders driver, and here comes Gossadi then who had that massive problem early on. Right. I would say that result not representative of his pace. Again, we saw Kostya look very strong in the GT3 cars after what was a bit of a disappointing 2017 season for him. So I'm expecting more from Kostya look in race six. Final standings then. Michael Smiddle once again top of the charts with a Peter Dolezal with a very mixed race, having a great recovery drive in the second class car. Schlebeck coming home in the Alza Gaming car in third. Honzik four, Blazek five, it's Secret six, Lucas in his uh, season best of seven. Brahaska Ray, Cotter League nine in Pelesny, rounding out our finishes.
And with fastest lap as well as we predicted with Pelesny, he went in for those softs. And that, that's one of the things that the different compounds and everything have presented to us is that he can do something like that. Uh, it is going to be 127 out of a possible 130 points for Michael Schmidl, though. Compare that to the 67 of Michael Blazek, who does hold on to second place in the championship ahead of Dolagel by just four points. Another six points back down to Pelesny, who again had a tough day today, but not as tough as Martin Stefanko in fifth with just 50 points after that shocking race. Well, it was a pretty easy race for me, you know, uh, I was pushing in the beginning of the race, but then uh, I had a 20 second gap to, to Peter Dolezal, so it was uh, again an easy win. Uh, quite disappointed about what happened uh, to my teammate because uh, he had a re refueling issue, so yeah. We really need to concentrate on those things and get rid of those problems, you know, and we will see how it goes. The, the car definitely has a potential. We need to make some adjustment, you know, on the, on the suspension, I, I think. So, yeah, there's def definitely more to come dur during the, this phase of the season. So, yeah, let's see what happens. And I'll, tra I'll translate for Andre Hlebets. He says, I'm really happy about my first podium, but it should have come a long time ago. We had a chaotic start. Sikora made a dive bomb into turn one, so it was not easy. Over the next few laps, he fought with Stefanko, who he managed to pass, and then just tried to pull away from the others. Uh, after his pit stop, just tried to save the engine and not make any mistakes. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a terrible race. Um, the start wasn't that bad. I got hit from from Sikora down the inside in turn one, and uh, I had damage on the car right from the first lap. So yeah, that was an ideal. Uh, then I managed to climb up to second place, but uh, on lap three or something like that, I'm not so sure. Um, the pedals basically started moving around when I when I was braking. So. Uh, either either I break the too little or I, or I outbreak myself and then I obviously made a mistake uh, into the pistol. I'm not really sure what happened there if I put uh, too much uh, too much frog wheel in or uh, if I hit something. I'm not too sure I'll have to look at it but uh, for sure uh, first DNF in virtual GP is not ideal especially now that I needed to close the gap to the guys ahead, so but what can you do? The only thing I can do is to learn from it and uh, make sure I come back better and stronger next time. So here it is, our first podium in the Mercedes-Benz C9, and it is a maiden podium for Andre Hlebets. A, a huge congratulations to him. Uh, also, fantastic race to Dolagel, but it is, of course, Michael Smittle who picks up a fifth win in a row in the 2018 Mercedes-Benz Virtual GP season. What an incredible race it was for Chris and the rest of the team. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.